I recently bought a very fat Into Xeon with 18 energy efficient cores and 36 threads. It's kind of the most powerful CPU for the 2011 V3 socket from V3 Xeons. Today we are going to do a little experimentation on this CPU. We will find out how many cores modern games really need and at what frequency they should run. You might be thinking, what a saber toothed dog beat me, that I decided to make such an unwise purchase. Well, I hope you remember about the Chinese copy of 1050Ti I bought from AliExpress while well, I decided to buy something crazier than that GPU to increase my chances of winning the dispute. After all, I'd already had two disputes in a row, and that's a crappy sign both for me because zero refunds are determined by the administration faster than non-serial ones, and also a bad sign for the administration because they will have to refuse me or in extreme case ban a wonderful customer like me. Anyway, you got the point. I was surfing AliExpress and saw a CPU with 18 cores for 2011 socket for only $140. I am like, that's a gift. Without thinking, I bought it. Yeah, for $140. Now it's $48. Why am I telling you this? Just a couple of years ago, this CPU cost some insane amount of money. I don't remember ex the exact amount, but I know it was over 200, 250. And now it suddenly dropped so dramatically in price, and I think I know why. Well, first of all, think about its age. The CPU is already 9 years old. It's not a grandfather, it's a real great grandfather. The CPU is very old. That's one of the reasons why an 18 core CPU is so cheap. The second reason is the rapid release of new and more, so to speak, modern platforms and CPUs from Intel and AMD. Intel goes back to its roots and takes cores from Intel Xeon and for some reason puts them in its new CPUs and calls them energy efficient, Xeonish I would say. By the way, have you ever wondered what percentage of the PC hardware market share is taken by Chinese products in post-Soviet countries? Judging by the abundance of these products on the secondary market, I dare to assume that no less than 10% of all PC hardware in the post-Soviet countries bought from China. And here is a riddle from Jacques Fresco. How many percent more expensive would new hardware from shops be if there were no Xeons from China? You have 30 frames per second to answer. While you're counting, let me tell you about a very useful little trick for cleaning the thermal paste of your Intel Xeon while spending minimum of paper. Well, let's say we have already removed the cooler, now tear off a small piece of paper like this one. You don't need any more because it's already a lot. Make a little hole in the tissue and put your finger in. It should go like this. Then go to your CPU and start using your finger like I did to scrub a thermal paste as much as you can, as fast as you can. Alright, now take a tissue and wipe your finger with it. There you go, you can see your finger is almost clean. But we didn't wipe all of the thermal paste, which means we need one more try. We do the same thing, but now we need to wipe faster. Well, the CPU is almost clean, now we wipe our Xeon with the napkin we wiped our finger with. And this is such a negligible amount of wipes I took to clean the CPU. To become a real master in this craft, you will need to spend a year and a half of high intensity practice. I will tell you, this skill can be applied not only to cleaning Intel Xeon, there are many other places where it can be applied. Anyway, I have shown you, so you're welcome to use it. Well, now having one of the most powerful GPUs of the previous generation, I can start testing Intel Xeon and I will test it only in games. It's not interesting to test it in programs, in my opinion. I will start with Cyberpunk, Ultra Settings and RTX On. Let's see how many cores and threads this great game really needs. For clarity, I will show through the task manager, first limiting the powers of the CPU in relation to the game to one core and two threads and we get a stable 15 frames. Now slowly but surely increase the powers of the CPU, two cores and four threads, we get a double increase in FPS. Now we have 30 stable frames, but I have a feeling that if I will start moving I will get 15 frames again, three cores, six threads, 35, 40 frames. Now for the classics. 4 cores, 8 threads, getting about 50 frames. Cores still work without interruption, and the load on the GPU has increased significantly. 5 cores, 10 threads, add another 10 frames. 6 cores, 12 threads, get plus 2 frames. 
and the GPU bottleneck. In the task manager, of course, we see 80% GPU load, but the power consumption shows that the GPU is loaded to the maximum. But 6 cores and 12 threads are not the limit for the engine of this game. You can see this FPS on the static picture. By the load, of course, you can see that for this game it's not enough. 8 cores, 16 threads, I reduced the game resolution to the limit. The FPS went up another 10 frames and the cores got a little bit relaxed. Now to unload the GPU a little, I will lower the RTX settings. I put lighting to the medium. Now I turn on 10 cores 20 threads, which in this game when driving and transport safely loaded at 100%. The frame rate varies from 55 to 70 and surprisingly there are no freezes. The game is on SSD. Anyway, I'm turning all the cores on. CPU load 75%, video card is still not loaded, the FPS has gone up a little bit more, now the GPU draws about 70 frames, the drops are quite insignificant, and the load was evenly distributed across all the energy efficient cores. And in fact, that is the limit of the CPU in this game. Now let's see what will happen if we will limit the frequency of the CPU to an incredible 1.2 GHz on all cores. Unfortunately, we can't limit it lower, because the minimum multiplier here is 12, and we get 30 frames with dynamic frame time. Let's set the frequency to 2 GHz, well, everything isn't that bad, it's playable. I never cease to be amazed by optimization in this game. 3 GHz, if we will look at all 3 frequency presets, we can see a stable performance gain from increasing frequencies, which is obvious, the higher the frequency per core, the higher the FPS. I dare say, looking at the comparison data, that if Xeon had 4 or 5 GHz frequencies, this game would have 90 to 100 FPS with 4 GHz and 110 to 125 with 5 GHz frequencies. Oops, seems like I stuck in this game like Tom Cruise in a time loop. Watch Dogs Legion. Does anyone really play this crap from Ubisoft? Anyway, you can get 50 to 60 frames in this game on the max graphic settings. But actually, if you will look at the frame time, you will realize that it's not really playable 50 to 60 frames here. Well, at least not everywhere. And I will remind you, this PC costs an insane amount of money. The game is certainly playable. There are freezes only when driving. RDR2, the settings are maxed out and in this game Intel Xeon does very well. 130 frames at the same time GPU is a bottleneck. If you see lags, you need to know that they are only on record. There were no lags on the gameplay, I don't really know why this happened, so named graphics card I have not seen a persistent software problems for a long time. So pay attention to the frame rate graph, where there are waves, there are actually lags, but by the way not always peaks on the frame time graph means freezes in the game. Yes, it happens that there is a clear freeze on the graph, but the game is super smooth. That's the paradox. The game is, by the way, on HDD. God of War, Ultra Settings, and here look at the interesting behavior. 38 frames, but if you turn back, the FPS immediately increases, and the load on the GPU increases. If you're carrying a boar, you don't notice it because you're not turning your head. You can feel it with me. Notice when Kratos look at the boulder in front of him, the FPS plummets dramatically. This is perfectly visible on the graph. I can say it's comfortable or something you can get used to. On the contrary, it happens even infuriating. There are certainly plenty of such scenes in the game. With PlayStation settings it will work perfectly, but on the maximum graphic settings for PC everything is unfortunately sad. When FPS drops sharply from 120 frames to 60, it affects the comfort of the game. This can be partially solved by the lock on 60 frames. But it's not that interesting to play with 60 frames if you can play with 120, although the monitor is only 60 Hz, but the frame time is reduced from 16 milliseconds to 8 and responsiveness in control becomes much higher. Who gets it? Gets it. Look at this crap. When you look into the distance, frame time starts to strobe a lot. In short, this game is obviously not optimized for Intel Xeon. It uses 16 threads at best. It's worth saying that such an uneven load on the GPU has a detrimental effect on its lifetime. After all, along with the change of the load on the GPU, the temperature jumps as well. And if the temperature changes frequently, the BGA balls on which the chip is sealed also experience temperature fluctuations. And as you know, solid objects consist of atoms and molecules. 
between which there are free spaces which become larger when heated and smaller when cooled. And if the BGA ball on which the chip is sealed will very often experience expansion and contraction, sooner or later the contact of the ball with the crystal or the textolite will disappear. A couple of years of using the card in these conditions and the breakdown will not make you wait long. Now let me show you games for which such Xeons are bought. The Witcher, the settings are maximal. And freezes here you will be pursued as collectors for credit debt. The game is on HDD and the part of the reason is in it. But those who buy such hardware are unlikely to buy an SSD for games, so testing is in real combat conditions as they say. PUBG. Jesus, this thing became available on PC for free. God bless those who bought it with money. And there is nothing to say here, freezes are everywhere. Sometimes they are even harder than in Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. I don't envy those who are going to play this game on such hardware and even on HDD. By the way, this one is on SSD. On HDD it will be even worse. Now let me tell you funny things may be waiting for you around the corner if you build PC on such a similar CPU. Those who buy such hardware count on performance boost due to such a procedure as Turbo Boost Unlock. Yes, there is certainly a sense from unlocking the maximum frequency for all cores, but it's all individual. For example, this CPU is unstable when unlocked even without undervolting. Yes, a couple of times a month the computer with the CPU freezes and shows BCOD. If such a situation normal for you, there is no question. As for this 18 core CPU, it is stable with unlock and a 50 mV voltage reduce. You may get a processor that can work even at minus 100 mV, or you may get a CPU that is unstable just with Turbo Boost Unlock, like mine for example, so it's a real lottery. You may or may not be lucky. When I bought this hardware, it was September 2020, taking into account the cheap at that time 32GB DDR3 memory, it was for me a very favorable offer. You don't need that amount of RAM for gaming. But for Sony Vegas, where I edit my videos, this amount is just right. When I was editing my videos on a computer with 16GB of memory, the program often crashed with an error. Those situations were making my ass burn. That's why I needed a PC with that much memory. Crashes, of course, didn't stop, but they became much less frequently. It's because the problem with RAM bottleneck was gone. Also, such hardware allowed me to play all modern games, but now, given that the price difference between DDR3 and DDR4 memory is not so striking, if we are talking about used RAM, because for new 32GB DDR4 you still need to pay a lot. Also, there are many good CPUs released recently. Their prices, of course, leave much to be desired, but this is modern hardware with which you can look forward to the future. You can imagine this CPU soon will be exactly 10 years old. In short, if we consider this platform purely for games, it's not that good a solution. Someone may say, but there are CPUs with unlocked multiplier for this socket. Yes, there are good ones, but the problem is that there are such boilers that the heatsink on the motherboard will melt from the load. In general, it's not a pleasure. In unoptimized games you will have freezes. But if you have passed stalker games, where every 5 meters of the game world you see a big freeze, then you will be fine. This hardware is not badly optimized for AAA projects, no matter who says what, but any high-budget games have great optimization. It's just that some people want Cyberpunk to run on 775 socket and GTS 450, 4GB of RAM and an ultra settings. But that is impossible. Most of the problems that arise on this platform can be dealt with, of course. Make and unlock, reduce memory timings, put the game on fast M2 drive, install lightweight windows and so on. The question is whether you are ready to bother for the sake of it. In general, think for yourself.